Hello, welcome to another Excel at the office.com video. My name's Adrian, and this is the finale in my uh, follow along dashboard. Um, so I've given you several videos um, so far. We got to here last time, which is probably good enough for most of you. That's all the functionality of the dashboard. Um, but if I just run through the steps with you, in video one, I demoed the dashboard and showed you quickly uh, the functionality. Video two, I set out the core worksheets and colors and readied the data. Video three, we did the pivot tables and uh, dashboard space. Video four, we created all the charts to make um, pivot tables go beyond pivot tables and just make your present your data a bit nicer. Uh, video five, we did all the uh, slices to make the dashboard work. Now this last video is all about just um, tidying it up, giving an intro page and saving it. You'll find a blog with all these steps um, written on my blog at ito.blog forward slash blog. So let's get to it. What I'm going to do in this step is show you these finishing touches. So you've done the hard work so far, so why not polish it off with a nice introduction page explaining uh, the product for your users, any caveats you need to include, um, tidying up the tabs to make it most accessible and to avoid people confusing things or worse, mucking up your spreadsheet and uh, then of course uh, saving it. So we're going to create an introduction page. I'm going to show you how to sort your page margins. Uh, we'll hide any technical sheets and also if you're handing over to somebody, if I show you my ready-made uh, Blue Peter version, you might want to include um, instructions to this. So let's create that uh, introduction sheet. So I want to create an intro sheet um, a bit like this. I'm not going to spend um, long on this. I'm just going to quickly show you. Um, so first of all, I'm going to grab my uh, image by copying it. And on the intro sheet, uh, what I tend to do is um, insert a text box, which is over here. And I'm going to use the trick of holding down Alt to align it with my cell margins. And if I call this uh, Dunder Mifflin People Dashboard, uh, you might uh, write some introductory text about it. Um, what I'm going to do is use the formatting to format this uh, the same color as my uh, color themes, which we sorted out in the uh, second video. I like Arial. I'm going to use uh, white text because uh, white text on a dark background is the second most uh, readable format. So I'm going to make that text a lot larger, as is uh, this one. You only need a couple of lines. I might even make that a bit bigger. Now to put in my company logo, which I've already got on my clipboard, so I'm going to paste it there. And you might have a contact over here. So I'm using a, a mix of cells and text boxes. It doesn't really matter if you want to be really precise. I'd obviously use text boxes, um, but it's good to have someone that people um, can context. And again, I'm going to change it from the default to Arial, uh, make it bold and use my preferred font color. Now what I want to help navigation um, I've started on my dashboard. I've got a home button here that takes people to this um, page. I can add that home button um, by copying it and putting it on other pages that I might direct people to. So for example here, obviously I'll uh, need to fill that so people can see it. And also on my data page. You might put it um, up the top here. So now people can use that to go home. But to get there, rather than have the tabs at the bottom, um, what you can do is insert, under insert, a shape, which is under here. And this is going to be my 
uh, navigation. So first of all, I'm going to have the dashboard itself. I'm going to color it in the same color as my tab. So I'm going to go for Arial. I'm going to make the text uh, far bigger so people can uh, see what's going on. And what I'm going to do is right click and link it to the place in this do document and the dashboard page. And you can even give a screen tip if you want um, called go to dashboard. And this is just a way you can aid navigation in your Excel report. So you see that there's my screen tip. If I come off it and then select it, then I go to my dashboard, click home, I go back. So what I'm going to do is create two more buttons and then we shall reconvene so that I'm not keeping you for too long. And I'm just going to start with a copied version of this one. So there we go. I've got my uh, three buttons now. Um, just one quick tip. If you want to um, select something uh, while it's uh, linked, you right click on it. And if you want to select something else, um, you hold down control. Uh, what I need to do on these under the shape format is remove the uh, outline. So no outline. And this, in terms of my edit link, I want to go to my pivots. And let's call this go to pivots, click OK. And this one, I want to edit link and that go to my data. And uh, do the same with the screen tip on that. So that's my navigation sorted. Next, I'll want to write, insert a text box to um, give a bit more information about this report and what people will find most useful about it. Um, so you might have that longer and a bit like I've done on my ready-made one. Um, I've given some tips on how to use the report. Um, what the point of it is, and um, I've even given a slogan here: the people, papers, people, persons, paper, people, for the fictional company Dunder Mifflin from the office. Uh, I've designed this one a bit differently, but it's up to you really. But the, you get the gist of it: is um, use a mix of shapes, uh, links, images, and that image, by the way, you can link like you can link a shape to a website. And then the text you format uh, using a text box, you can then format that a bit like you can format text in Microsoft Word. So when I write uh, introduction and purpose, I can make that format. If I select the whole text box and do everything aerial for a start and bigger, but um, my titles by double, triple clicking, I can make my titles formatted a bit differently uh, from my main text, be that uh, larger size. And you can even uh, emulate bullet points with uh, just using the dash uh, like this. But once you have got that uh, sorted, what we're going to do next is tidy up our sheets. So uh, First of all, we're going to make sure it, the print preview um, is good. Um, I might actually move this over into my text box. I'm going to insert a text box to overlay in here. So you can use um, text boxes to overlay other text boxes. So I don't need that. So this is going to be neat. I want it all on an A4 page. So what I'm going to do is go to my print layout to sort out my page margins. And first of all, I want to scale things so that everything fits on one page. So doesn't that look nice? You can even adjust the margins to uh, make them a bit narrower so it prints out a bit bigger um, so that when people see the report, um, they get a, a nicely presented page. Uh, and for example, if you're selecting uh, two 
by holding down shift selecting the two tabs at once I'm going to select the two and when I go to print uh, here you will see that there's page one and there's page two and this is quite good if you want to export uh, something to uh, PDF for example which can be done through the print navigation or you can save it as a PDF so that's how you um, sort out your page margins and make it all fit on one page nicely next we're going to sort out the view for the users to clean it up so um, we're going to switch off headings to maximize the space grid lines to make it look a little less excel-y and the same with formula bar so you can switch all those off next i'm going to hide the technical sheets that i don't want people to uh, get confused by so the color schemes uh, and the lookups in this situation you can just select those sheets by control by holding shift or control to select multiple and then just hide uh, those sheets now you can stop people from easily uh, unhiding those sheets by under the review tab you can protect the workbook you can give it a, uh, a password if you want but you don't have to and that stops people playing about with the structure so now they cannot unhide or hide things but the savvy ones will if they want to be really nosy they'll um, unprotect the workbook if you haven't put a password on it now here's a really important thing if you want to free yourself up without having to update this each month with new data but you want to then hand it over to someone else to update so that you can go ahead and create another uh, snazzy dashboard. I'd recommend, and this is good practice anywhere in any organization that's uh, rarely ever done, is put instructions on how to update the Bloomin' Thing in the Bloomin' Thing. Uh, because otherwise, uh, if you leave the organization or move on to bigger and better things because you've just been promoted because you're producing fantastic Excel uh, dashboards like this, saving the company, having to fork out tens of thousands of pounds for uh, Power BI and other things it might not need. Well, you're leaving people with something they don't know how to work because they don't have the skills. But what you can do, as I've done in this one is put a tab in there called um, update instructions maybe and um, I've called I tend to call this how to update this report now I know this might seem like a revolutionary idea but it's very <laughs> simple and I don't know why more people don't do it and using a bit of um, savvy formatting between uh, the cell so typing in a cell is fine you don't need to merge the cells when uh, as, as long as you're not putting something next to it it will just bleed over into the subsequent cells so broad step retrieve the new data from the source and then break down those steps into the more specific steps then how one goes about refreshing uh, the data making sure it's all in the right place so if you guide people through that you're the best person to um, guide people through these steps uh, these update instructions uh, because uh, you've created the report yourself so just do it so that anyone an alien from another planet could uh, follow the steps make it very simple but breaking it down into themes is helpful so whether updating the pivots and so on and then saving and distributing so breaking it down into the broad themes but then being specific on exactly what you're telling people to do and I would recommend doing those um, instructions uh, when you are uh, updating it the first one or two times yourself so that you make sure that you uh, can encounter any snags so that someone else doesn't go hang on these instructions don't follow this report so here's the value of why instructions are very helpful as I mentioned it's good to be precise you might even consider using screenshots as I've done this big green blob alongside my uh, dashboard in my example dashboard with notes you might do screenshots instead to convey some tricky uh, points um, and I've um, talked to you about um, structure obviously readability is important make sure you use at least 12 point aerial text and uh, just generally 
save things regularly and we've gone through the grid lines headings and uh, page breaks so that um, you can under view turn off grid lines turn off headings to just make it look a little less like Excel because that's more pleasing to the eye and then obviously uh, the last port of call in this dashboard that you've lovingly created it's a bit pointless if you don't share it with anyone so make sure you save it and then share it uh, either in your shared file with your company because obviously you don't want to send a big file by email so email if it's over five megabytes even don't be sharing that by email and you'll have a nightmare with version control anyway so share it in a single file space that everyone can access so I hope you found this uh, video series on the dashboard creation helpful helpful um, I have a follow along uh, where you can create this uh, dashboard I've created the raw I've compiled raw data for you so you can go and practice this but of course these steps and this video series will apply for any um, sort of um, dashboard you want to create regardless of your data source um, so yeah this is more the kind of icing on the cake to make everything uh, look nice and I've covered um, I've covered the intro sheet decluttering the tabs and making it look less like Excel and print ready. The last thing when you're saving it, if I'd, I've just noted down this quick tip here, uh, when you're where you leave things is where it'll open for people. So I don't want to click save now. I want to uh, go to control. I want to press control and home on each page. So that's control and home. Then page down control home page down control page down control home so you'll play each time control home is just a shortcut for placing the cursor in cell a1 so that when someone comes to it it's all uh, ready and nicely viewable for them so take a look at my blog excel at the office.com slash blog or ito dot blog slash blog and until the next video um, take care